Hey YouTube, Bob here. Today I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing a controller that I got from Controller Chaos. And Controller Chaos makes custom controllers for systems such as Xbox, PlayStation, and various Nintendo consoles such as the NES, Wii U, and GameCube. And since the most recent iteration of Smash Brothers on Wii U, the GameCube controller has kind of experienced a surge in popularity. So, we're going to take a look at one of their custom GameCube controllers. Got the box here. We'll open it up. Looks like it comes in its custom box. Got a nice little code there. QR code to scan for support if there happens to be any problems. Controller Chaos, Extreme Controllers for Extreme Gamers. This box contains the following controller. We're going to have a, let's see here, oh, none of those. We should have a GameCube controller in here. It says, a Controller Chaos, we know that your controller is more than just a plastic accessory. It's your sidekick, your wingman, your battle buddy. This is why we offer the most comprehensive list of add-ons and customizations anywhere. We use only the best parts and employ the industry's leading customer service team. Our controllers will help you dominate the competition and look great doing it. And that's true. If you take a look at their website, they have so many different designs for all of their different controllers that they offer. They offer ones that are based on characters or franchises, and then just some pretty cool artistic designs as well. And that's what I opted for, was just an artistic design. So you can uh, hook up with uh, Controller Chaos on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, YouTube and Instagram here. So let's take a look at what we have inside the box. That opened up easily. Assembled by hand, made with care. And there's a little controller chaos dude. And right away you can see the controller in there looking pretty spiffy already. I'm a big fan of the 80s so I chose a controller that I thought uh, was pretty reminiscent of the 1980s, which is this one here. So out of the box, you get your controller. And what else do we have in here? It's like the whole insert's gonna come out. There we go. Wow, this is just like, uh, this is an insert that you would see inside the GameCube box, the console box. This is what the uh, controller was housed in. So nice way of even reproducing the package. So inside, looks like we got a little sticker sheet, Controller Chaos. Elevate your game. ControllerChaos.com, Extreme Controllers for Extreme Gamers. They got all their contact information there. Pretty cool. And what we're going to do here, before we get into some gameplay with the controller, we're going to compare it with a licensed GameCube controller. And I gotta say, right off the bat, I am impressed with just the aesthetic of the buttons. Usually with uh, an aftermarket controller or a third-party controller, you can tell just by looking at the buttons that they aren't, uh, they aren't made by Nintendo. But these buttons, if you look at the, the face buttons here, and even the sticks, they look exactly like the official Nintendo buttons. And the controller does have a very nice feel. The paint job, I'm really impressed with the paint job. I mean, even uh, with the licensed Nintendo controller with this uh, Platinum Edition, you can see where the paint has worn away from having contact with uh, whatever I set it on over the years. This particular paint job on this controller, this is like some heavy duty stuff. I, I can tell that it's not gonna wear away anytime soon. It's glossy, it feels high quality, and the controller in your hand feels just like a licensed GameCube controller. So I'm excited to test it out. I'm going to test it out with uh, two games, uh, just to, I can already tell that the buttons are going to be uh, high quality here. I'm going to be uh, testing it out with uh, Wave Race Blue Storm uh, to give the uh, thumbstick a whirl, because I like to use the thumbstick uh, to make precise uh, movements uh, with the watercraft in the water. 
and I'm going to be playing uh, Tetris Worlds, which you might think, Tetris Worlds, why would you play that game? I'm going to use that game to uh, test out the accuracy of the D-pad, which uh, it's pretty well known the D-pad on the GameCube controller is no one's favorite. It's very small. But one thing that it doesn't do, uh, in, at least in the um, licensed controllers, is it doesn't uh, give you a dual input. And what I mean by that is a lot of times with cheap controllers, if you push to the right, it also registers either up or down with it. So you get kind of a diagonal. You have to be sure that you're hitting exactly on the right edge and there can't be you know, any pressure on the up or down. Otherwise, that's going to register uh, in your movement on screen. So I want to uh, use Tetris to see you know, how, accurate, uh, how uh, accurate you need to be in pushing the button to get uh, the block to go where you want it to go. In the GameCube, you know, that was that was a 3D system, so the um, the uh, D-pad was not uh, was not one of the most important aspects of the controller at that time. It was more the uh, the analog stick up here. And one last thing before we get into gameplay. Oh. Oh yeah, that was one other thing. One other reason why I wanted to uh, test Wave Race Blue Storm is that uh, that was one of the few games that made uh, extensive uh, use of the analog triggers. If you don't know, the uh, L and R triggers on the top of the controller here, they are analog, which, you know, it registers how far down you push until it clicks. And that's really integral in the steering mechanic. You use the, D -pad, or the uh, analog stick here on the left, in conjunction with the analog triggers on the left and right of the controller to uh, determine how hard of a turn you're going to make in Wave Race Blue Storm. So I want to get a feel for how well those work. But before we do that, let's just take a look at the cord. It looks like you get plenty of cord, as much or even more cord than uh, with the, uh, with the uh, licensed Nintendo controller. And it looks like the connector here is not going to cause any problems. A lot of times with aftermarket or third-party controllers, the connection of the, uh, of the controller uh, uh, in the controller port is actually kind of tight. That was more of a problem on the uh, NES, Super NES, and N64 than the GameCube, but uh, it seems like this is going to fit. No problem. So I'm going to get this uh, hooked up, and we're going to try out some Wave Race Blue Storm to start. All right, so I've got uh, Wave Race Blue Storm loaded up here, and I have both the Controller Chaos and the licensed Nintendo GameCube controller hooked up to my GameCube system. And just to confirm, on the left, as you see as we go down there, the uh, Controller Chaos controller cord is quite a bit longer than the licensed Nintendo GameCube controller by at least a couple of feet. So that's pretty cool. And on the left here, you see that my dog Timmy has decided that he would like to participate in the controller review. So here we go. Alright, so we got Wave Race Blue Storm loaded up here. I'm going to load my save data, which is <laughs> over 10 years old. And I think to get to the exhibition, we'll go to Championship. I think that's where it is. There we go. Yeah, this is a nice, easy introductory course. Uh, which I'm going to need because it's been a long time since I've played this game. And uh, it's a good uh, good chance to get used to how you're supposed to use the analog stick in combination with the uh, analog triggers on the top of the controller to uh, steer your craft. Let's go! So we'll get loaded up here. I don't know if you can hear in the background my uh, GameCube loading. I could have just as easily played this game on my Wii, but... Um, I think uh, since this is a GameCube controller, we'll, uh, we'll keep it as pure as possible. Alright, so here's the exhibition. This is day one I remember being so wowed by these graphics when the game first jacket. came out. They still are really beautiful. But, um, they're showing their age a little bit. audio here. I'm lining out the audio to my uh, digital video camera that's grabbing the footage here. So as I start playing here, I can tell you that um, if you didn't tell me that I wasn't using a licensed Nintendo controller, I probably wouldn't have known the difference. It feels really good in your hand. The only thing that feels different is that it's glossy, given the paint job. 
I don't think that any of the licensed Nintendo controllers had a glossy finish to them. They were all kind of matte paint or uh, just plastic if there wasn't any super, uh, special uh, paint job going on like the Platinum. Just playing this game here and pulling off the uh, do a barrel rolls and uh, the forward flips or backward flips just as easily as I would with uh, a licensed Nintendo controller. The buttons feel just as responsive. The controller, even if it is, and I'm not sure about this, even if it is a uh, licensed Nintendo controller with a paint job on it, uh, it feels a little bit heavier. It feels a little bit uh, weightier. Uh, but um, I can feel the rumble. It's working just fine, which is a nice feature to have. Oh boy, all right talking not paying attention there we go see if I can recover do I, have a tur I don't have a turbo but I will after a couple blues here there we go a handstand yeah nice all right so yeah this controller is great for all intents and purposes I would say that uh, it is just as good if not better than a uh, licensed Nintendo GameCube controller if not for the longer cord and uh, the build quality, even though I'm not sure if this isn't just a painted licensed Nintendo controller, because it does have the Nintendo logo on the back. Um, I don't know, it just feels heavier, it feels meatier, and I couldn't tell the difference between it and a uh, licensed Nintendo controller. So uh, I gotta tell you that the buttons are responsive, it passed my analog trigger and analog stick test on Wave, uh, Wave Race Blue Storm. Let's see uh, how well the D-pad fares uh, in Tetris Worlds. Alright, so we got Tetris Worlds loading up here. I guess I do have some uh, saved data on my memory card. THQ. Alright, so I know Tetris Worlds may seem like kind of a strange choice uh, to uh, test a game controller on. But like I said, the reason for that was to test out the D-pad. Uh, the GameCube was designed to be a 3D system. You know, 3D po polygonal graphics, uh, which... That was, that was the thing at the time, in the early 2000s, uh, when the system was put out. So the D-pad was included, kind of, I don't want to say an afterthought, but it was certainly uh, assumed that the analog uh, stick here and the C-stick were going to be doing the bulk of your on-screen controlling. The D-pad was probably just uh, for getting through menus and things like that, which is why it's so small. Uh, but um, I think, uh, like I said before, in aftermarket or third-party controllers, uh, they aren't always as responsive. And I think Tetris is a really good game to uh, gauge how responsive that the D-pad is. So I don't remember much of this game here, but I'll just go into story mode, start game. Got a little bit of a load time here. All right, let's see. Go left, Tetris. right, quick drop up. Yeah, okay. Quick, responsive, one-to-one -one input here. Single. Single. Now I'm going to try to push, I'm going to try to move this block to the right, and I'm going to push a little bit down as well. And no, down is not registering. Down moves it down like that. As I push left and right, those are the only signals that it's getting. Even on uh, licensed Sega Genesis controllers I find with that huge d-pad a lot of times sometimes it registers up or down even when you're just trying to push uh, left or right. Case in point uh, when you're trying to make Sonic run sometimes he'll stop mid-run and do a duck and I've tried it with several controllers and I think that's just a minor flaw of the Genesis controller. You gotta be spot on in your uh, left and right touching of the d-pad. Otherwise, you're going to register some up or down, which you don't want. So, with that big explosion there, I think we'll bring this test to a close. The D-pad passes. It is very responsive, just as responsive as the D-pad on the uh, licensed uh, Nintendo GameCube controller. So, there you have it. That's Controller Chaos's custom GameCube controller, or at least one of several 
variations that they have of this fantastic controller. It's just as good as a licensed Nintendo GameCube controller. And uh, given that this is such a popular controller, used with the GameCube, the Wii, the Wii U, for Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, what have you, uh, if you're looking to pick up a replacement for your controller or just you need a new controller for Smash Brothers, I would definitely recommend Controller Chaos's uh, offering here. And the good news is, is that if you head on over to their site, I'm going to put a link in uh, the video description here and you use the coupon code world of n for world of nintendo i'll put that there on the screen for you uh, they got a little bit of a coupon deal for you so head on over to their site and check out all the awesome designs from controller chaos